day class. In this video, we are going to discuss the last principle in the acupuncture and motivation treatment. Quantifying the deficiency, expanding the excess. Quantifying or reinforcing, expanding or purging. So these different terms are exactly the same. It means we need to tonify the deficiency. We need to re relieve the excess pathogens. When we say deficiency, wherever we see deficiency and excess, we need to keep in mind that deficiency means the deficiency of the zhang fu organs, the deficiency of the anti pathogenic qi. When we say excess, it refers to the pathogenic qi, excess of the pathogenic qi, or the excess of pathogens. So there will be no excess antipathogenic qi. There will be no deficiency of pathogens. Okay. So we need to be very clear to these terms of deficiency and excess. Deficiency refers to the deficiency of antipathogenic qi. Excess refers to the excess of pathogens. Yun Shu described that we can use tonifying method on the deficient symptoms. We can use purging method or aspartic method in the excess syndrome. We can use most reduction in thinking. So what kind of thinking we're going to discuss later. And also some situation, there's no obvious excess or deficiency. So we will base on the meridian. So these are the principles from the issue. When we see the deficiency and excess, we also keep in mind we also need to keep in mind that the deficiency and excess sometimes they also accompany to each other. Because from the onset of diseases, previously when we discussed in the basic theory, the onset, why the, the pathogens can attack the human body, there must be deficiency. Something deficient in the in the body, that's why the the, the relationship between the antipathogenic qi and the pathogenic qi. So whenever you see a patient, you need to think in you need to think in these three aspects. Firstly, using the tonifying methods on deficient syndromes. Firstly, we need to understand what's deficient syndromes. Deficient refer to the deficient of antipathogenic qi. The patient may present as fatigue, weakness of the inner extremities, short of breath, diarrhea, and uresis, lack of milk after giving birth, weak body constitution, recovering, which recovery from severe diseases, or recent recovery from severe diseases, and chronic diseases, etc. So all these may indicates the deficient symptoms. Once you diagnose that the patient is in the deficient condition, you can use one passion. You can use comprehensive technique of reinforcing in acupuncture in acupuncture. You also can use specific applications or specific points that's more likely to Reinforce, such as Rung 4, Rung 6, Du 4, Bladder 43, Summer 36, and the back two points, the, and Yuan source points. These are more likely to tonify the, the, deficient, the, the deficiency. We can use acupuncture with reinforcing manipulation technique, or we, we can combine with the motivation or even the motivation only. So as you can see here, for deficiency, you're going to focus on motivation. 
com the combination of acupuncture and motivation or of acupuncture with reinforcing technique. Motivation is very important for deficient syndromes. Using motivation for the thinking. So the thinking, this is the description from Lin Xu. Describe that the patient said from thinking, but it, in the Xu, it, it didn't define what kind of thinking. It only defines the thinking, and then it can result in a plastasis. You can use motivation. There are four situations that we can use motivation. Deficiency qi, the qi deficiency results in hyperfunction of zhangfu organs, and prolapse of internal organs, the thinking. Hyperfunction of zhangfu organs, what kinds of situation can, can be considered as the hyperfunction of zhangfu organs, especially referring to thinking, for example. Short of breath, tachinia, the key, poor appetite, loose stool, diarrhea. These are the hyperfunction of jump organs. It depends on which organ, the lung, spleen, or the kidney, if kidney, if you relate it to male problem, diarrhea at dawn. So early early morning, spermatorrhea, or in females, it can have excess bleeding, chronic excess bleeding, and then the prolapse of internal organs. This can be the uterus, it can be the anus, it also can be the stomach. So everything sinking and move downwards. The second, the motivation, also can be used for lack of blood in the vessels. The lack of blood in the vessels is actually related to the hyperfunction of zhangfu organs. When we see the lack of blood in the vessels, it actually refers to the blood deficiency. Blood deficiency, when we see blood deficiency, we need to think about where does the blood come from. The formation of the blood. Then you can think about the spleen, the kidney, the liver, all these different functions, uh, all these different type of organs. The weak or forceless powers in the superficial or deep levels. This also re refers to the deficiency. The weak powers, the forceless powers. Deficiency can from the superficial and deep levels can help you to identify the superficial deficiency or internal deficiency. Extreme failure of yang qi. This is also similar to yang qi depleted. Extremely feeble pulse. So this is these indicates this deficiency. In this situation, we can use motivation. Yang depleted, the patient may suffer from excess sweating, cold extremities, or from the, the test. You can see the, the blood dropping, the blood pressure. In this situation, we can use motivation. And when we rem when we're thinking about the, the yang depleted, very commonly happens in the it very commonly happens in a situation of stroke. So in a stroke due to yang depleted, we can use motivation. Lung for organs or meridians qi deficiency. These are some examples of qi deficiency of lung for organs. And then apart from these manifestations, we also may see other manifestations due to different organs. So what should we do in this situation? We can tonify the qi in middle jiao. We can use do 20, rung 8, rung 6, rung 4, rung 12, bladder 20, bladder 21, bladder 23, stomach 36. 
you will see that the blood meridian, the back shoe points or back transport points more are more likely to be used in deficiency to tonify. This is also the principle that we introduced previously. The difference between the back shoe points and the front move points. Blood 20, Pi Su, Pi is the spleen. So when you see the Chinese name Pi Su, you will know that this, this point is related to can tonify the spleen. Blood 21, Wei Su, Wei is stomach. So that's the, the points to tonify the stomach. Blood 23, Seng Shu, Seng. Is the kidney, but the 23 is the point to tonify the kidney. Stomach is 6. So for qi, thinking, any symptoms due to qi thinking, we can use these points. More specifically, we can use most function on these points. Although you also can use the combination of most function and acupuncture. Using the purging method in excess syndrome. Excess syndrome refers to the excess of pathogens. We can use the reducing manipul manipulation method or prick for bleeding. Excess syndrome. This is just an example. It doesn't have to be all excess syndrome presents exactly the same, high grade fever, sunstroke, unconsciousness, convulsion, sparrow, and severe pain. Severe pain, so previously we said the sharp pain, the sharp pain is not stabbing pain. Okay. The sharp pain, uh, it depends how you define the sharp pain. If it refers to severe pain, then it more refers to excess syndrome. Unconsciousness is also can due to excess syndrome, excess syndrome or deficiency. In this example, we use the unconsciousness as the example of excess syndrome. That's also why from here you will see our treatment is not based on the symptom, but although we use the symptoms as an example, we more based on the pathogenesis, the symptoms. Unconsciousness, all these symptoms, but what we focus on as the syndrome. In this situation, especially the high grade fever, it can indicate that it can indicate that antipathogenic qi is not weak. We can use do 14, large intestine 5, liver 3, rather 40, do 26, Shu Xuan, and 12 Jing well points. These, um, these points can be used to relieve the excess pathogens. These points are also very commonly used in different kinds of excess syndrome. As you can see from all these examples that we have gone through until now, for excess or deficiency, Clearing for tonifying, you will see that sometimes we repeat the points quite often. There's also another reason. When we study, we study more than 300 points, but in your practice, you may not use all these points. You will choose the one that have better efficacy, either from others' experience or from your experience. So you can, you can use similar points as long as the principles, the symptoms are the same, such as G14, large intestine 4, liver 3, rather 40. Especially in this group, this group, all these points are very commonly used for clearing heat. You can use reducing technique or prick for bleeding. So it depends on what you want to do. You can choose either, or you can. You also can choose. You can combine them. 
for example, after you prick for bleeding, you prick da zui, you prick wei zhong, blood, you prick du fourteen, you prick bladder forty, and then after pricking, you also can put a one cup, cupping, to increase the bleeding. This is also the combination of needling technique of the acupuncture with three edge needles and the cupping. The excess blood syndrome. It is actually re refers to the excess syndrome, but more related to the blood, such as the standing blood. In this situation, sometimes we can see the physical blood, the standing blood, such as in the behind the knee, blood 40. You can see the, the local area around there. You can see the blue veins. In that situation, we can prick the vein to cause bleeding, especially the patients suffer from lower back pain. So we, we can use prick for bleeding. Activate the blood circulation, removing the standing blood. The last principle, using the acupoints on the affected meridian of St. Jones with no obvious deficiency or excess. In some situations, we can be able to identify deficiency or excess because uh, it is not that obvious or even at a very early stage of diseases in this situation. We can use the Yuan source points of all the five Su points, etc. We can use the even method, neither reinforcing nor reducing. That's, that's what does it mean by even method? In the clinical practice, sometimes we will see, actually very commonly, we will see the combination of excess and deficiency. The either the superficial and internal, such as the, from the superficial deficiency and internal excess, or superficial excess, internal deficiency, or from the upper and lower jaw perspective, the deficiency in the upper jaw, the excess in the lower jaw, or the deficiency in the lower jaw, the excess in the upper jaw, as well as the true and false excess and deficiency. When we see these, these cases, we need to think about the principles, the principles of quantifying and reducing, the principles of reinforcing and reducing or expanding these principles. We can choose according to the symptoms, we can choose according to the situation. Which one do you want to choose first? Which is which pathogenesis, which cause you need to you need you want to focus first, which is the domin which is the dominant cause of the situation. So when you decide these all different aspects, this will affect your treatment. For example, do you want to tonify the upper jaw and reduce the lower jaw? You want to tonify the superficial or reduce the internal or in the other way. You want to tonify from the left side. We, we have the points on both sides. You want to tonify from the left side and reduce from and even with the same group of treatments in, this, in one prescription. We also can tonify some points and reducing some points. You can tonify some first and reduce some later. For example, a patient suffers from hyperactive liver yang. So when we say the hyperactive liver yang, we have, we have explained that the this liver yang, we actually try to differentiate from, we, we try to distinguish from the, the liver fire and the deficiency heat from indeficiency. So from the hyperactive liver yang due to liver indeficiency. In this situation, we need to tonify the liver in and reduce the liver yang. In this situation, we will tonify kidney 3, kidney 7, 
tonify the kidney in. And in the meantime, we can reduce level 3, level 2. So for kidney 3 and kidney 7, we're going to use the reinforcing method. For level 3 and level 2, we're going to use the reducing manip manipulation technique. Another patient suffered from gallbladder deficiency and liver ex excess liver syndromes. So this patient may suffer from fear, fear and insomnia. In the meantime, the patient will have irritation, back temper, and distending feeling in the in the chest, especially on the side of the chest and the abdomen. In this situation, we are going to tonify the gallbladder, especially for the for the fear, that kind of feeling, the fearful, the fear, the gallbladder deficiency. We can tonify. G, G, gallbladder 40, gallbladder 19. In the meantime, because of this patient cause irritation, something related to the liver, we can reduce level 2 and level 14. So we need to consider which one is dominant, which one we need to perform first. Do you want to reduce the pathogen first or do you want to tonify? The deficiency first. So even only four points, two group of points, which one do you want to perform first? Yes. As we emphasize in Lin Su, the deficiency and excess are very important. We should reduce the excess, we should tonify the deficiency. In our treatment, we will never quantify the, the excess and reduce deficiency. In this situation, you will cause more problems. So these are some examples of the reinforcing and reducing. We can reinforce from and reduce from different meridians according to the symptoms. We also can re reinforce and reduce from different parts of the body, from the left and right from the upper part or the lower part, such as reinforcing on the left, reduce on the right, reinforcing on the right, reduce on the left, depends on the individual situation. In future, when we study the specific diseases, we will mention the, uh, the detailed technique of reinforcing and reducing. So until this video, we have introduced all three principles in our acupuncture and special treatment and practice that we need to consider. Although these principles we explain one by one, as we mentioned previously, these principles are not absolute principles. You need to be very flexible. You need to understand the, the thoughts behind the principles. You, need to, you can apply them very flexible. So don't stuck on the on these principles. But you need to consider on these principles. Of, but you need to consider these principles. In the treatment, in order to achieve the function, the efficacy of the your treatment, we need to focus on the insertion the direction of the insertion, the duration of the manipulation techniques, the duration of the treatments, the frequency of the treatments, the depth, the angle of the, of the insertion, the depth of the insertion. So all these aspects are related to your, are very close related to your efficacy. This is very similar to the, the result, the efficacy, and the dose, the dosage in conventional medicine. On the tablets, the dosage, how, how much dose you need in order to achieve the efficacy. After how long you need to repeat the dose in order to maintain the 
a certain level of the, the drug in the blood, in the body. These are very important, the dosage and the, the free and the disease. It's very similar in acupuncture. The frequency, the duration of the treatments, the frequency of the treatments are very important to, to our treatments, the acupuncture and motivation. So it doesn't mean, although I knew that many practice in overseas always have something once a week, once in two weeks. That's also why from here you will see sometimes it doesn't work that well because the frequency is not enough. A few years ago, there's a very large scale research conducted in Australia for the lower back pain or the knee pain. But the result is negative, which means the, the, the function of the acupuncture is very similar to the placebo. There's no sig significant difference between the placebo and acupuncture groups, which means acupuncture is not worthy for these diseases. But when you see the, the, the design and the, when you see the design and the treatments, you will see that there's actually some limitation there because of the accuracy of the points, the angle of the treatments, of, of the, the angle of the insertion, the depth of the insertion, the duration, the frequency. These are all the aspects that we need to focus on. If you don't consider all these aspects, you talk about the, the efficacy of acupuncture, it doesn't make any sense. Acupuncture doesn't work. Acupuncture doesn't work at all. If you don't focus on the ankle, the manipulation techniques. That's also another reason. In future, you will see that many patients, especially the local patients, they don't like, some of them, they don't like the, the sensation. So many acupuncturists in overseas, when we said overseas, I mean out, outside China, they will adapt to the locals. They don't use a strong manipulation. They only use, they only apply the treatment once a week or even one, twice, once in two weeks. When we see patients in this format, you will see that your efficacy, the result will be very bad, actually poor results. You will lose your confidence in acupuncture. Why from the textbook is it not well? Why from my practice doesn't work? And also we need to keep in mind that acupuncture is not only applied in like chronic situation, milder situation, acupuncture is also can be applied in acute situation, uh, can be applied in acute situation, in emergency. In future, we will share some cases on the, the treatments of acupuncture in emergency. Although, especially in South Africa, sometimes we don't have the chance to have, to have treatments in the acute or in the emergency, especially in the emergency situation. But as a practitioner, you have to know that what we can do, what we can assist, and what stage we can assist. Thank you for your attention.